Okay. Today, me and Marcos is going to read the the, the good dinosaur. dinosaur. This is our story for tonight, and that's Marcos and I'm Mommy Lynn. Okay. So, Henry and Ida were plant-eating dinosaurs who live on a farm near a wide river at the base of Clotooth Mount Ten. Ten. The happy couple worked very hard to make their home the perfect place to raise a family. Three eggs would soon be hatching. And then, one day, as Henry was out watering the crops, It's time! Ida called. The first two eggs to hatch were a boy and a girl. Buck, said Henry, and Libby added Ida. The third egg was the biggest. Crack! Inside an anxious yes, little dino stood up and he, he fell right back down. Henry chuckled, hello Arlo. Their family was complete and together they would take care of the farm. Baby. Mom, yeah. which one is the biggest? This one. But Arlo got the biggest egg ever. So they thought he's going to be the biggest one. But it looks like he's the smallest one. Next page. As the young dinosaurs grew, Mama and Papa built a silo. When it was done, they added their marks. Footprints placed in the silo. The children wanted to make their mask too. You earn your mark by doing something big for something bigger than yourself, Papa said to the children. Someday you'll all make your mark, and I can't wait to see it. Pop earned his mm. mark by clearing a field of trees. You listen. Libby earned hers by plowing. Arlo tried to earn by feeding the family's animals. Even though they frightened him, he didn't give up. I'm going to make my mark like everyone else. One night, Papa took Arlo into a field of tall grass. A firefly landed on Arlo's nose. He froze in terror. Papa blew gently on the insect. It lit up and fluttered away. You gotta get through your fear to see the beauty on the other side, he said. Then Papa swished his tail. Hundreds of twinkling fireflies filled the air. Papa had a new job for Arlo. A creature had come to the farm and was stealing their food. If Arlo got rid of the creature, he would earn his mark. Arlo and Papa found the creature in the silo eating their corn. They chased it into the wilderness. Suddenly, a flash flood dragged down in the riverbed. Papa quickly pushed Arlo to safety. But as he did, Papa slipped and fell into the roaring water and disappeared. Died. That's very sad. Without Papa, the family was sad. They struggled to keep up with the farm work. You need to rest, Mama, said Arlo. I'm okay, she replied. If you don't get this harvest in before snow hits, we won't make it. Don't worry, Arlo said. I won't let us starve. At the silo, Arlo heard a rustle. It was the creature. You, he cried. This is all Mama, your fault. Where is the critter? It may be in the next page. The critter grunted. Then it jumped onto Arlo's head, slid down his back, and ran off. Arlo gave chase, but the critter startled, startled him, sending them both into the river. Help! Arlo cried. Mama! The little dinosaur struggled to stay above the water as the fast-moving river pulled him farther from home. Oh, that's very sad. When Arlo finally washed up on the shore, he slowly got to his feet and called Mama. But there was no answer. Arlo was trapped between the river and a steep wall. And then he heard a critter howl from the top. The critter was the one who had caused all of the Arlo's problem. Furious, Arlo tried to climb up to it. When an exhausted Arlo finally reached the top, this the critter the was critter. gone. Yep. Wilderness stretched for miles, and Arlo couldn't see Clotooth Mountain. As he watched the river below, he remembered his father's words, Find the river, and you can find your way Out. home. 
Slowly, Arlo followed the river just as he started to feel hungry. He spied berries, but even the stretching his long neck, he couldn't quite reach. Arlo tumbled down on the rocks as he struggled to stand. He realized that his foot was stuck. When darkness fell, all Arlo could do was curl up and try to sleep. Later, Arlo awoke to find his foot was free. The critter footprints were everywhere. Could the critter have released him? Soon, the rain startled again. Arlo made himself a very small, very leaky shelter. As the rain stopped and Arlo got shell settled, something moved in the bushes. It was coming right at him. It was the critter, and the critter was really a human boy. The boy brought Arlo a lizard for breakfast, but Arlo only ate plants. Next, the boy brought Arlo a dead bug. Yuck! Arlo pushed it away. Finally, the boy offered him fresh berries. Arlo gobbled them down and asked for more. The boy led the dinosaur to the berry tree. When Arlo reached for the fruit, a poisonous snake prepared to attack him. Terrified Arlo scrambled away, but the boy jumped in front of Arlo, defending the frightened dinosaur. He growled and barked at the snake, driving it away. Arlo couldn't believe it. The boy had just saved his life. Just then, a strange Istarokosaurus emerged from the woods. He was a pet collector, and he wanted the boy to be his new pet. The dinosaur decided that whoever gave the boy a name, he would respond to could keep him. Bees, the Starokosaurus yelled. The boy didn't move. Spot yelled Arlo. Now the critter name, name is Pot. The boy smiled. The Starokosaurus rumpled. Clearly, Spot was meant to be with Arlo. After nightfall, Arlo and Spot found a place to cramp by the river. I miss my family, Arlo said. Spot stared at Arlo and then he leaned back and howled. The boy misses his family too. Arlo let out a long sorrowful howl of his own. Oh, like that? That's how they howl? Mm -hmm. oh. Together, Arlo and Spot continue walking along the river. Without warning, the sky unleashed a powerful storm. It reminded Arlo of the day he had lost Papa. Arlo was so frightened that he ran aimlessly. Looking for a place to hide, Spot followed close behind. They finally took shelter under the roots of an overturned tree. That's their shelter. After the storm, there were fallen trees everywhere. Help! Arlo called and a pack of pterodactyls descended from the sky. At first, Arlo thought they were friendly, but the pterodactyls attacked and tried to fly off with Spot. Arlo grabbed Spot and ran as fast as he could. He thought he saw other dinosaurs like himself and yelled for help, but they turned out to be T-Rexes. Arlo and Spot were sure they were doomed. Do you remember the name of the T-Rex? No. To Arlo's surprise, the T-Rexes were friendly. Butch? And his two children, Nash and Ramsey, were out searching for their lost herd of longhorns. That gave Arlo an idea. Spot can sniff out anything. He said he can find your longhorns. In return for their help, the T-Rex says promised to lead Arlo and Spot back to the river. Spot picked up the longhorns, sent quickly, and started barking. When Boots saw the feather, Arlo found he grunted. He knew that... What meant the herd had been stolen? Rustlers, we gotta move. The herd was grazing over the next ridge, but the rustlers were hiding in the tall grass. Butch wanted Arlo to lure them out. What if they have claws and big feet? Asked Arlo. Don't overthink it, Butch replied. Why Arlo... is he biting? <laughs> it's just like cuddling. Butch replied, Arlo climbed into the large rock but was too scared to anything. Spot helped by biting his leg. Chop! Ah, Arlo screamed. He's helping Arlo. <gasps> the rustler, who were actually a group of raptors, charged. The T-Rexes sprung into action, fighting off the raptors while trying to control the herd. Giddy up! Come on now, giddy up! They shouted. Soon, the raptors had Butch pinned to the ground. 
Arlo pushed aside his fear and head butter the raptors away. When the fighting was all over, the T-Rexes had their herd back. That night, the T-Rexes shared their stories of bravery around the campfire. Arlo sighed, I'm done with being scared. Listen, kid, you can get rid of my fear, Butch said, but you can get through it. Find out what you're made of. I need to charge my phone for a little bit. Wait one second. Hi guys. Hi. Hmm. Hi guys. And we're reading a story. <laughs> Hi. The next day, Arlene Spot helped drive the herd toward the watering hole. Over a hill, there was a welcome sight. Clothed mountains shouted Arlo. You'll be all right, said Butch. You are one tough kid. Arlo smiled. It was time to go home. Keeping Clothed Mountain in sight, Arlo and Spud ran through fields, jumped across boulders, and climbed to the top of a rocky hill. Spud scrambled into the dinosaur's head. Arlo stretched his neck, and his head poked up above the clouds. Wow, said Arlo. When Arlo and Spot reached the river, they saw that they were near the mountain pass that led now, home. Who is this? That's Spot's father. You mean this? <clears throat> yeah, the creature. The two friends howled with joy. Someone hold back. It was a human just like Spot. Spot stopped and sniffed the air, but Arlo didn't want his friend to leave. We need to get home. Thunder and lightning filled the sky as Arlo and Spot made their way to, pa to the pass. Without warning, pterodactyl is swooped out of the clouds for another attack. Spot! screamed Arlo as the pterodactyl grabbed his friend and flew away. The pterodactyl carried Spot to the river. Fighting back, the boy was able to scream out of his captor's grip. He scrambled away and hid inside a hollow tree, but the pterodactyls found him Spot was trapped. Just then, Arlo ran down a steep slope. With his head down, he charged the closest pterodactyl and knocked it into the river. He glared at the others and bared his teeth. Then Arlo snapped a tree in half and swung it into three more pterodactyls. Finally, he let out the terrifying roar, scaring the last attacker away. All of a sudden, a flash flood turns through the pass. Arlo leaped in front of the huge wave and tried to reach Spot. Oh my goodness, but the water snapped Spot's tree at the base. It pushed Arlo's friend even further away from him. Arlo was determined to save Spot. He fought the strong current and swam until he and Spot were back together. Unfortunately, they were headed for a waterfall. The friends held each other one tight and plummeted over the edge. Arlo and Spot splashed into the deep pool. After a few moments, they burst to the surface and grasped for air they were okay Arlo got them to shore exhausted but safe that's then when they fall down the yeah. waterfalls oh look at that the next morning was sunny and clear as they began the last day of their journey home the farm was in the distance spot hauled a happy hole the hull was returned the human man had come back and this time he had bought his farm he had bought, brought his family spot went to them and sniffed the mother and the father smelled and gently Thus led his hair. With his muzzle, Arlo drew a circle around Spot and the others. Oh, Spot climbed onto Arlo, but the dinosaur let him on the ground. Spot tried to climb back on, but Arlo pushed him away. Arlo knew it was time to Spot to be part of a family again. So the two friends said goodbye. As Spot walked off here with his new family, Arlo said him whole once more. And Arlo hold back. You said? That's okay. At least they were with the family. Not look. Not long after, Arlo finally arrived home. At first, Mama didn't recognize the strong, confident dinosaur standing by the silo. But then, Arlo, she cried and ran to her son. The family reunited joyfully. Arlo moved toward the silo and dipped his foot into the mud, then put his footprint on the stone. Arlo had done something big, and he had earned his mark, just as Papa knew he would. The end. Ah, oh, that's a nice story. What do you say to your... Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Do you like this book? It's just at the library. 
Come and get it. It's fifty dollars. Oh, fifty dollars. Okay, don't forget to subscribe my channel and click over there. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.